Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Hey, brothers and sisters. Hope you all are doing well. We give prayers. Ahaya, ashre, ahaya, and our dona yache, mesiaka, and our mother, ruaka, kwadosi. How are you doing, brother? I'm doing well. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm glad you're doing well, man. Praise the Haya. It's nice to spend this time with you today. Yeah. It's a wonderful Shabbat today. Yes, it is. Today we're going to be looking at how the Holy Spirit works and who she is, along with understanding the heavenly family. If we look at John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. John chapter 7, verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Yahshua stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. But he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Spirit was not yet given, because that Yahweh was not yet glorified. So we see how it was through Yahweh we receive his mother. Now that we understand this, it gives us great hope in Yahweh to be reconciled back to Allah. And we know in John chapter 12, verse 48 to 50, he said that everything he speaks is what the Father told him to speak. Right. So it's wonderful to know who is really speaking there. Right. <laughs> come unto me and let him drink. You have to come unto the Father right. through the Son to receive the mother. And we see Yache is the door to this. Our hope to attain unto her. We look at John chapter 10, verse 11. John chapter 10, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. Let's look at what Thomas spoke about in regards to the good shepherd. In Acts of Thomas chapter 39, please. Good shepherd that gives yourself for thy own sheep. He said, it's speaking of Yache. Right. Who have vanquished the wolf and redeemed thy own lambs and led them into good pasture. We glorify and praise you and thine invisible Father and thy Holy Spirit. Who the, is she? <laughs> the mother of all creation. The mother of all creation. The apostles understood. Right. And Ahaya Alahayim is bringing the understanding forward here in these last days that we may understand the family. That's right. And Paul understood as well. We look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31 to 32. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 31. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. So this is what we do carnally, right? right. Well, what's he really talking about here? This is a great mystery. A great mystery. But I speak concerning Messiah and the church. Yache left his father and his mother right. to be with his wife, <laughs> the <right>. bride. <laughs> so we see that Yache had a father and mother. Now let's also touch in the book of Sirach to hear her attest who she is herself in the book of Sirach, chapter 24, verse 18. I am the mother of fair love mm -hmm. and fear and knowledge and holy hope. All these are spirits, and she is the mother. And Yache testified when he was on earth concerning his mother in Luke chapter 7, verse 35. But wisdom is justified of all her children. He said all her children. She didn't just have one child. Right. There were more. Even as she just said, she's a mother of love, fair, knowledge, and hope. Let's look at Ecclesiastes, which is the book of Sirach, chapter 4, verse 11. Wisdom exalted her children, and lay hold of them that seek her. So all her children are exalted, because her children in us, they strengthen us to attain unto Allah. Right. And her children are glorified, because it's through the works of her children that we attain unto Allah. Right. Shepherd of Hermas, Parable 9, chapter 15, verse 1 and 2. It says, Declare to me, sir, say I, the names of the virgins and of the women that are clothed in black garments. Here, saith he, the names of the more powerful virgins, those that are stationed at the corners, the first is faith, and the second continence, and the third power, and the fourth long suffering. But the other stationed between them have these names simplicity, guilelessness, purity, cheerfulness, truth, understanding, concord, love. He that beareth these names, and the names of the Son of Allahim, shall be able to enter into the kingdom of Allahim. 
And we understand that because these are her fruits. These are her children. Right. And we've got to bear all her children to enter into the kingdom. That's right. Yeah. We look at uh, Sirach chapter 24, verse 18 now. This is the mother speaking again. I am the mother of fair love and fear and knowledge and holy hope. I, therefore, being eternal, am given to all my children which are named of him. Mm -hmm. His mother is calling us, Jew and Gentile. She has authority over the sons, and this is according to the law. Yes, yeah, Sirach chapter 3, verse 2. For I have given the father honor over the children, and have confirmed the authority of the mother over the son. All right, that's why wisdom calls on to us. Now let's look at Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1 to 6 to learn more about this Holy Spirit. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1. Do of not wisdom cry, and understanding put forth her voice? She standeth in the top of high places, by the way in the places of the path. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in, at the doors. Unto you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of man. So we see the mother has authority over the sons. That's we see right. her calling unto the sons. This is why as the head of a household, whether father or husband, one has to be an example to one's household because the responsibility lies on a man. Right. And it's wonderful to see that she says she calls unto the sons of men. She's calling unto all men. All right. Continue in verse 5 and 6 of Proverbs 8, please. O ye simple, understand wisdom. And ye fools, be ye of an understanding heart. Hear, for I will speak of excellent things, and the opening of my lips shall be right things. And everything she speaks is lawful, because the things that are excellent are found in the law, because they are the will of Allah, as Romans chapter 2 verse 18 shows, which substantiates that her prudence comes from the Father, and she receives instruction from him and does not deviate from anything he commands, but teaches and does what he commanded. And let's look at Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence. She dwells with prudence. So this is where she lives. Right. Okay, continue. And find out knowledge of witty invention. So she's finding these things out from someone, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> this is that, that she lives with the Father because she dwells with him. Who is the source of prudence? He created her. Right? You look at Ecclesiastes, which is Sirach chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Sirach chapter 1, verse 8. There is one wise and greatly to be feared. Ahaya sitting upon his throne. He created her and saw her. He created her and saw her. Love at first sight. Continue. And numbered her and poured out her upon all his work. This love at first sight, just as Adam. When he first saw Chihuahua, right. he saw her and he knew her and they were connected, right. could not be separated. What Allah Hayyam has joined together, let no man put asunder. She even attested the mannerisms of the father. In the house they dwell in, seeing as though she was with him from the beginning, she should know. <laughs> Let's look at Isaiah chapter 57 verse 15. For thus saith the high and lofty one, that inhabiteth eternity. This is the Holy Spirit. Continue. Whose name is holy. Quadoshi. <laughs> That's her name, Quadoshi. Continue. I dwell in the high and holy place. Because she's up there with the Father. And with him also, that is of a contrite and humble spirit. The person she's with is of a contrite and humble <laughs> spirit. That's Ahaya Alahayam. That's who she dwells with. That's who she learns all the knowledge of witty invention. Continue. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. What she learned from him would help her heal us. If we walk in that contriteness and humbleness of spirit, it will revive us unto the righteousness of Allah. Understand the mystery by the revelation of Ahaya. The house of Allah is our heart. As Barnabas chapter 6 verse 15 mentions. Hence, if we don't operate in these fruits, they will not come in to live with us. Hence, in sincere love, she teaches us the excellent things that she has seen and learned from the Father, so that we may be proper dwelling places for them to come into. Let's look at wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 7. 
And if a man love righteousness, her labors are virtues. So we see how we have to actually love righteousness to enjoy her labors. That's right. Because if we don't, her labor is burdensome. Right. I continue. For she teaches temperance and prudence, justice and fortitude. So now we have understanding to know when is the Holy Spirit teaching us, right. guiding us and instructing us. Because she teaches us of virtues. These are all the things she learns from the Father. Continue. Which are such things that men can have nothing more profitable in their life. This is the true treasure, brothers and sisters, to have these fruits in us. This is what's profitable for us in our lives. Because it connects us back to the Father. Now, let us learn of her, whom we desire. Let's look at Sirach, chapter 24, verse 1 and 2. Sirach, chapter 24, verse 1. Wisdom shall praise herself, and shall glory in the midst of her people. In the congregation of Hallelujah, on her, she shall open her mouth and triumph before his power. She is the breath of his power before him. Let's uh, look at Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 25. For she is the breath of the power of Elohim, mm -hmm. and a pure influence flowing from the glory of the Almighty. Therefore, can no defiled thing fall into her. Now we have edification that she is the breath that flowed out from the power of his glory. Let's go back to Sirach chapter 24, verse 3 to 5, and verse 9. <laughs> Sirach chapter 24, verse 3. I came out of the mouth of Eluyono, and covered the earth as a cloud. I dwelt in high places, and my throne is in a cloudy pillar. As she mentioned in Isaiah, the high and lofty one. Right. Continue. I alone come past the circuit of heaven and walk in the bottom of the deep. He created me from the beginning before the world, right. and I shall never fail. The Ruach Akwadoshi is powerful. Right. The breath of the power of Allah. <laughs> Let's also look at Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 26, please. For she is the brightness of the everlasting light. She is the brightness of the everlasting light. Right. So she is what makes the light bright. <laughs> Continue. The unspotted mirror of the power of Allah. And she is the image of Allah as well. When you see her, you see a clear image of Allah in her character and in the righteousness of how she operates. So we now know the Father is of a humble and contrite spirit. And the Holy Spirit mirrors his good character in her righteousness. This wisdom is also in the scriptures because in Sirach 36 and 23 it says, If there be kindness, meekness, and comfort in her tongue, then is not her husband like other men. And this is because even as Allah righteousness is exemplified in his wife, the Holy Spirit, even so when a man is upright, you'll see the righteousness exemplified in his wife. So may that be encouraging for the men that we get it together and be these humble and contrite examples of believers for the conversion of our wives unto the faith that they may stand as mirror images of the Alahayam exemplifying the fruits of the Spirit even as the Holy Spirit does unto us that we may know the Father and the Mother and our Lord Yahshua Christ continue and the image of his goodness. So she's the image of his goodness. Even as a wife exemplifies the goodness of her husband. And when a wife exemplifies the goodness of the Holy Spirit, you can see it in all her actions and how she manages her house. Can you read Sirach chapter 26 verse 16? As the sun when it ariseth in the high heaven, so is the beauty of a good wife in the ordering of her house. That is a wonderful thing because it exemplifies the Holy Spirit. Right. As you see how she is ordering the house of Allah, which is her house as well, being his helpmeet, to bring it all in righteousness unto him, so ought the wives to operate as the Holy Spirit, in doing all things and all the fruits of the Spirit to order their house well. And now let's also look at verse 14 as well, please, of Proverbs chapter 8. Counsel is mine, and sound wisdom. <laughs> mm. I am understanding. I have strength. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17 to 21, please. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. I love them that love me. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 18 says, And love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. So for us to show that we love her, 
we have to keep our laws. And in that obedience, we also believe on the name of Yahweh, because that's one of the commandments we've been given in 1 John 3 and 23, so that she will love us also. Proverbs chapter 8, <laughs> verse 17 to 21, please. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. And in seeking her, what direction would it lead one to? I lead in the way of righteousness, yes. in the midst of the paths of judgment. One will start to judge by the law. Right. So you see, as we seek her, we start to understand the law and discern good and evil better as our mind is being renewed through the spirit of Mishiach Ayache. To think as spiritually minded people according to the spiritual law. Continue. That I may cause those that love me to inherit substance. So you see where her journey is leading us? Through seeking her to righteousness and pass of judgment, she's causing us to inherit real substance. Right, continue. And I will fill their treasures. Our hearts will be filled with the fruits of the Spirit. Let's look at Proverbs in chapter 8, verse 22 and 23, and then verse 30. Ahiah possessed me in the beginning of his way before his works of old. Now this is key. Him possessing her substantiates she is his wife. Because he that getteth a wife beginneth a possession, a help like unto himself, and a pillar of rest. As Sirach chapter 36 verse 24 says, uh, let's continue Proverbs chapter 8. Now we're at verse 23. I was set up from everlasting, from the beginning, or ever the earth was. Just as we confirmed in the lesson on the Trinity that she was created first in the beginning. Let's continue in Proverbs 8 verse 30. Then I was by him, as one brought up with him. So she was with the Father when all his work was happening, as one brought up with him. Mm -hmm. And I was daily his delight. He rejoiced in his wife. Rejoicing always before him. And she rejoiced in him. We are called to walk in love as the father and mother walk in love, delighting and rejoicing in one another as brother and sister firstly. The key is to become brother and sister first because as the Holy Spirit mentioned in Proverbs 8 and 30, she says, Then was I by him as one brought up with him. They were like siblings. It was sincere love first so that the love may be true and binding. And this is our example to walk in with our counterparts. Notice also the Father loved and delighted in her daily. Now we are understanding why Yache commanded men to love their wives as he does the church, because Yache loves the church daily and is never unforgiving, bitter, grudging, nor does he hate his church because she is his flesh. He operates as he saw the Father operate, as he testified he does all things that he's seen the Father do in John 5 and 19. Let's look at Proverbs 5 and 18 and 19 to see how wisdom admonishes us to do these things. Proverbs chapter 5 verse 18. Let thy fountain be blessed. That's your children. And rejoice with the wife of thy youth. Let her be as the loving hind and pleasant rope. Let her breast satisfy thee at all times. And be thou ravished always with her love. Be thou ravished always with her love. And hence one will not go unto a strange woman that is not one of one's wives. Even as our father Jacob, he did not go unto any other woman besides his four wives. It is a commandment to love our wives deeply and passionately from the heart, whether she is virtuous or unrighteous, because we are commanded to be perfect as he is. Husbands and wives, seeking how they may please one another, spending time and developing good communication is important in a relationship because the Holy Spirit, she sought out how she may please her husband, spending a lot of time with him to be familiar with him to develop their relationship. Uh, let's look at Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 3 to 4. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 8 verse 3. And that she is conversant. With Elohim. So wisdom is familiar with and knowledgeable about Elohim, just as a woman who is knowledgeable about her husband because she spends a lot of time with him. She magnifies her nobility. And it makes sense because nobody knows her husband like she does. <laughs> Yea, the Lord of all things himself loves her. You see how his sincere love is towards his wife. She rejoices before him and spent time getting to know him as a wife seeks how she may please her husband, so it's easy to see why the Lord loved her so much. And just as a man spends time with his wife, and they talk about things and work together, the father talked with his wife, 
as well by evidence of her being privy to the mysteries of his knowledge and she appreciated that bond with him loving his works just as any woman enjoys being involved and in spending time with her husband continue for she is privy to the mysteries of the knowledge of Elohim and the lover of his works. So you can see how they built their relationship, getting to know one another, as brother and sister brought up together, spending a lot of time together. He loved her, and she was cleaved unto him, getting knowledge from him as a woman learns from her husband. And she loved him, rejoicing, being encouraging unto him as a lover of his works, and rejoicing before him. He loves her and she loves him. She rejoices in what he does and he rejoices in her. It's complete unity. The word awkward to be one. Let's look at Sirach chapter 1. Can you verse 6 please? To whom hath the root of wisdom been revealed? Mm -hmm. Or who hath known her wise counsels? Unto whom hath the knowledge of wisdom been made manifest? And who hath understood her great experience? There is one wife and greatly to be feared, Ahiah upon his throne. So there we know who knows her, her husband, <laughs> the only one that can truly know her. <laughs> and it makes sense, seeing as though they spent that time getting to know one another. Good to you. The verse 10, please. She is with all flesh according to his gift. According to his gift. So one cannot receive her without his consent. So we see she doesn't operate on her own accord, doing all things in agreement with her husband. Even as we saw in the Trinity lesson, how she consulted with her husband on where she ought to dwell when she sought somewhere to rest with the sons of men. Continue, please. And he hath given her to them that love him. And in loving the Father, you will honor the Son, because that's what he commanded us in John chapter 5. Right. And through that love, we may receive his mother, Yache's mother, that is. Now for understanding the love for Allah. We saw earlier that we have to love the Holy Spirit by keeping her laws, and she will love us. And now we see we also have to love the Father. And according to 1 John 5 and 3, the love of Allah is keeping His commandments, and they are not grievous. So we see we have to love both the Father and the Mother, keeping their commandments to be loved by them, and we will receive the reward of the Holy Spirit. The Scriptures confirm that the keys to receiving the Holy Spirit is to keep the commandments. Can you read Sirach chapter 1 verse 26, please? If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments, and the highest shall give her unto thee. A very straight admonition for us who seek to have wisdom. So for our understanding, Yahshua is our everlasting Father. So the Holy Father and the Holy Spirit are our grandparents. And as any grandparent, the Holy Spirit wants to be with her children. And she wants her children to come unto her. Let's see what she says. Let's look at Sirach, chapter 24, verse 19. Please. Come unto me, all ye that be desirous of me, and fill yourself with my fruits. Her fruits are her children. Right. The fruits of her womb. Yache the firstborn, as Colossians 1 and 15 and Hebrews 12 and 23 said. And notice he's the only begotten son, as John chapter 1 verse 14 and 18 tells. And since he was the firstborn, not the only born, that means she had other children, as Luke chapter 7 verse 35, Sirach chapter 4 Verse 11 and chapter 24, verse 18 said, Children, not child. The other children are not males because Yacha is the only begotten son. So she only has one son, but the rest of the children are her twelve daughters, which are the twelve holy spirits and virgins in Hermas, parable 9, chapter 15, 1 to 2. This is why the mother said, Fill yourselves with my fruits, because we cannot only have her son to enter into the kingdom. But we must be filled with her twelve daughters also to enter the kingdom. That's why the book of Hermas says we have to put on their garments and walk in their powers as well. And can't enter if we have the name of the Son only. Because the twelve Holy Spirits are children of the Holy Spirit too. And her fruits, they lead to life. Let's continue reading Sirach to see what she's admonishing. If you can jump to verse 22 and 23, please. He that obeyeth me shall never be confounded, and they that work by me shall not do amiss. All these things are the book of the covenant of Elijah on Elohim. There we see the work by the Holy Spirit is to operate in the covenant of Elohim. Even the law which Musi commanded for an heritage unto the congregations of Jacob. So we see we have straight admonition how we operate in the works of the Holy Spirit, keeping the law. And that's also a precept for uh, Jeremiah 
17 and what was it, 9? The, which one you pertain to? That we would lose our heritage. Jeremiah 17 and 4. four. Right. Right. It shows that the true loss of our heritage was forgetting what? the law. What the law. Right. Faint not to be strong in Ahia, that he may confirm you. Cleave unto him. For Ahia Almighty is Elohim alone. And besides him, there is no other Savior. We have the witness. Cleave unto Ahia Elohim. The Father is the only one that truly knows her. And he has given us some understanding of her. And what the Father has revealed of her to us by Yache is her son and the twelve daughters, the holy virgins, which is the word and the fruits, that we may be children of Allah in their powers, and that we may be accounted justified in them to inherit immortality too, as the children of wisdom. We cannot be justified without her. Now let's look at Surah chapter 1, verse 5, please. The word of Elohim, hallelujah, ono, is the fountain of wisdom. Yacha is the word. And her ways are everlasting commandments. So her ways are everlasting commandments, and the commandment of the Father is everlasting life. According to John 12, verse 49 and 50. So truly, man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of Elohim. All right, so we see how the Father and the Holy Spirit are united. They're one. There's no difference in what law they're teaching. They're teaching the same righteousness. Can you read Sirach chapter 1, verse 14 to 17, and verse 26, please? Sure. Sirach chapter 1, verse 14. To fear Ahaya is the beginning of wisdom. So this is where it starts, the fear of Ahaya. And it was created with the faithful in the womb. She had built an everlasting foundation with men. The everlasting foundation she built is Mishiaka. As 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11 says, no other foundation can man lay except Mishiaka. Right. And she shall continue with their seed. She also is the one who built the foundation because she reared him up. That's his mother. <laughs> right. The mother does the rearing and helps build the house. As Ruth chapter 4, verse 11 tells how Rachel and Leah did build up the house of Israel. The Holy Spirit, she was the one that built up seed unto Ahaya. She bore his firstborn son, his first fruit, which is the firstborn of the womb, the foundation of the house of Elohim. That's why the tower, when we read about it, was founded upon the great old rock, right. which is the son of Elohim. The book of God, the seer, tells in God chapter 1, verse 47, how Ahaya said, Thou art my firstborn and my first fruit. Speaking of Yache, so you can see how the Holy Spirit literally built up the house. And uh, let's look at Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 27. Oh. It's all right. uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 27. And being but one, she can do all things. And remaining in herself, she make up all things new. And there we see how we become new creatures in the New Testament. I'll continue. And in all ages, entering into holy souls, she maketh them friends of Elohim and prophets. So we see, when she enters into one's soul, she brings the law. She brings the remembrance of Elohim and makes them work righteousness. Hence, they become friends. As Yahweh said in the book of John, You are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. I believe it's John 15 and 14. All right, continue. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 28. For Elohim loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. We now have scriptural confirmation to know we have to keep his commandments that we may receive the Holy Spirit, because he loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom. Can you jump to Ecclesiasticus chapter 1 verse 16 so we can see what keeping the commandments and fearing the Lord will do? To fear Ahia is fullness of wisdom, and fill it men with her fruit. So we see how you walk in that fear, Ahia gives wisdom unto you and that wisdom causes one to be filled with the fruits receiving the fruits of the spirit it's all about getting to the word which is yache and the fruits of the spirit to attain unto the kingdom continue she filleth all the house with things desirable and the garners with her increase these are the increase that we need these spiritual things that will help us attain to the kingdom let's look at sirach chapter 1 verse 18 to 22 and then chapter 28 and 30. So chapter 1, verse 18. The fear of Ahaya is a crown of wisdom, making peace and perfect health to flourish. Right. 
both which are the gifts of Allah Hayyam. Right. And the enlargeth their rejoicing that love him. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding standing, and exalteth them to honor that hold her fast. The root of wisdom is the fear of Hayah, and the branches thereof are long life. That is how we attain unto life, continue. The fear of Ahaya driveth away sins, and where it is present, it turneth away wrath. You see, walking that fear will keep us from sinning. And in that fear, if we stumble along the way, we will be quick to confess our faults out of reverence for him. All right, jump to verse 28 to 32, please. Distrust not the fear of Ahaya when thou art poor, and come not unto him with a double heart. The admonitions is how to attain unto this Holy Spirit. Continue. Be not an hypocrite in the sight of men. And take good heed what thou speakest. That's why Yah just said, get the beam out of our eye before we look to get the motive out of our brother's eye. Because hypocrisy will hinder us from the spirit. Right. We have proper admonition to not be a hypocrite and guard the tongue. Exalt not thyself, lest thou fall, and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so Elohim discover thy secrets, and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation. Because Ahiah seeth after the inward man, whatever we have going on within, if it's not right in the sight of Elohim, it will get exposed. Because thou camest not in truth to the fear of Ahiah. So to come in truth to the fear of Ahiah is to come without hypocrisy, right. and to come in humility and sincerity. But thy heart is full of deceit. And when we operate in hypocrisy, it shows the deceit of our heart. For the fear of Ahiah is wisdom and instruction, and faith and meekness are his delight. So we see how the fruits of the Spirit, these are the things that delight Ahiah, Ahiah. The Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 17. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6, verse 17. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. That's how we make sure we don't die. And incorruption maketh us near unto Allah. That's how we get attained into holiness. Keeping the laws is to get closer to Allah. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth us to a kingdom. We seek unto her. She's going to lead us in the paths of righteousness. And closer and closer we get, the more we are closer to having Ahaya Allah in our hearts. That they may make their abode in us. And that seal that they are in us is the Holy Spirit. And we would be counted worthy if we endure unto the end to partake in the kingdom of Mishiaka and the kingdom of Allahayim. Now that Yacha has opened our understanding by the grace of Ahaya, we have an understanding of the heavenly family, particularly the mother. Is there anything you would like to add? Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Praise Ahaya. Ciao, 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 ciao,